Hockey is back. The roster is set and the season is about to begin tonight. And boy, are we ever excited to get into it all on today's edition of the Lockdown Leafs podcast. Part of Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, a daily Maple Leafs centric podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co host, Dave Morasuti. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Well, Dave, the uh, it's it's here. It's day one of the NHL season. The Leafs still got to wait 24 hours to get their game in. Oh, you hear that? Looks sounds like all the sirens going on outside. I don't know if you can hear it. They're excited for this season to begin as well, apparently, because there's a triple header tonight. Um, you know, kicking off with Nashville, Tampa, rolling into the Bedard Crosby showdown with Chicago and Pittsburgh, and then Seattle and Vegas. Uh, the banner raising. Will uh, will occur as the final nightcap of this triple header. So we'll get into uh, we'll get into those games in a little bit, and we'll give our predictions also on how we think things are sh- going to shake out. We'll tell you exactly who we think are going to win the divisional spots, the wild card spots, every single playoff spot, and then even you know who's going to be the final champion. We'll make those predictions on today's show. Tomorrow we'll do our Leafs over unders in uh, you know along with our preview of Maple Leafs and. Les Habitants. So if you're not subscribed to the show or you're not a daily listener to the podcast, hey, make sure you come back tomorrow because, again, we got daily episodes coming out Monday through Friday each and every day. It's all leaves all the time. You're never going to want to miss an episode. You can subscribe to us wherever you get your podcast from. Also, uh, you know, up, up on YouTube as well. Hit the little notification bell. That'd be greatly appreciated. But let's get into what's going on with the Toronto Maple Leafs. What we saw uh, happen over the course of, uh, you know, the last 24 hours since we last spoke on the podcast. We said there were still some hurdles and some roster moves that were going to be done in order to get cap compliant by 5 p.m. on Monday. Well, the Maple Leafs did a few different things, and uh, you know we finally have our roster set, Dave. Uh, why don't we go through some of the moves that were done in order to uh, get down to this roster that we have as of the time of this recording? Yeah, we're obviously the big one was waiting to see who was going to clear waivers. First, we got the news of who was sent down to the Marlies. Nick Robertson, Fonta Solenberg were the notable names that were sent back. But then it was all eyes on the 2 o'clock waiver wire refresh, waiting for somebody to put it out. And to a surprise, nobody claimed off the Leafs roster. Yeah, Martin Jones able to sneak through waivers and will be assigned to the American Hockey League. Uh, That was a bit of a surprise. We spoke on this yesterday. We've been speaking about this for the last few weeks, really, how the Tampa Bay Lightning were a strong candidate, we felt, to grab Martin Jones. But they decided not to take any goaltenders. One did get claimed. It was uh, Ivan Prosetsov or whatever, however you say that guy's name. He was, uh, you know, a Yotes draft pick or a Yotes prospect who was taken by the uh, Colorado Avalanche. But outside of that, no other goalies were claimed off of waivers, which means uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs, they do sneak away with one there with Marty Jones. They will, you know, uh, it allows them to have another depth veteran piece in the minors. And, you know, th- there's a conspiracy going around now that the only reason why the Maple Leafs were never able to keep guys when they were sent on waivers was because people just hated Kyle Dubas. Now that's what's going on. Oh, Dubas is gone. And all of a sudden, no one's interested in plucking guys off waivers from the Maple Leafs. Well, and uh, I don't know if you saw that Chris Johnson put a little nugget out there that with Martin Jones on waivers, that they put a little thing in his contract. This is pretty much almost like a little bonus he was going to get on the Tuesday after final rosters came out. And I'm like, it, yeah, I saw, but I think it was only like a hundred thousand, right? A hundred thousand, but for some teams, a hundred thousand for a guy that you may or may not play in the NHL all season long. That's 
I don't think that would have really scared off teams like Tampa who were looking to bring oh, him not in. Tampa. I'm and, talking about, you know, maybe some particular teams that don't like to spend money. If you catch my Sure, point. but they, they, we weren't worried about them anyways. But no. yes, I, I guess that probably was a smart move by the Toronto Maple Leafs knowing, okay, we're probably going to have to clear this guy. Hmm. If someone does want to take him, they're going to have to think twice because they are going to have to pay that $100,000 bonus on that specific day. And maybe the team not as interested in doing that. Um, but realistically, that, that the, they, they would have had to pay the money anyways throughout the rest of the season, realistically. So I'm not sure well, how. But what much if they put him on waivers again and he got claimed? They, well, yeah, that's they, true. They got that 100 grand of that, whatever that, you know. I'm, I'm assuming that they, let's say they play some on waivers within that period. Right. He just threw away $100,000 as well. Yeah, 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 that's true. Perhaps that uh, that did allow some teams to take a second look and think, now nah, we're good with what we got here. I think the one team that we were all kind of just holding our breath on was Tampa. And once, you know, we realized that that was not going to be the case, uh, there wasn't much, much worry. Uh, and two o'clock came and gone. And Martin Jones, still a member of the Toronto Maple Leafs organization. Another man who is still a member of the Toronto Maple Leafs organization and will continue to be part of the big club is Fraser Mitten. He did it, Dave. He made the squad out of training camp. It, it felt confirmed once the Sam Lafferty trade was made. Like I, I and Brad Chilovey did call him on Sunday to say you made the team. Yeah. So that was nice of him to hear it that way. But yeah, it, it just felt like the Leafs were positioned themselves to do what they could to not only give him the that chance, but to give other young guys that opportunity so it's it's great to see that and we talked about this too like the development of these young players really push forward and allow for a possibility like this because you know like technically mint is not the only guy that surprised some by making the roster i think zach benson in buffalo yeah other surprise one obviously he was a draft pick this year and not last year like minton was but yeah, it's very rare to see a, a player taking the second round of a draft the year prior get in some NHL games. Some teams don't generally don't do that. So it's nice to see that the Leafs are comfortable enough to put Mint in this position, right? They weren't forced to do it. They wanted to do it. Yeah, and he was playing uh, you know, in practice alongside Matthew Nyes as we had fully expected to see someone who he's definitely you know, had a lot of chemistry with over the course of the preseason. And also Callie Arncroft, who, you know, hasn't played a whole lot throughout the preseason, but I think it makes sense when you're thinking of third liners. Yarncroft is someone who we do, uh, you know, think of. And and here's the lineup, if you're watching on YouTube, exactly what the lines look like and, and the players who still remain on this roster uh, as of now. So, you know, obviously Bertuzzi, Matthews, and Marner, that's going to be your top line. Domi, Tavares, and Nylander, that's going to be your second line. And then Nyes, Minton, and Yarncroft make it up that third line there. Interestingly to note that Noah Gregor is still in this lineup and technically uh, skated alongside Camp and Reeves as the presumptive fourth line. Nick, Noah Gregor still hasn't signed his contract. He's still technically on a PTO. So, Dave, I wasn't sure if PTOs expired uh, I, I, or if they just kind of went for as long as you wanted them to go. So I did a little digging and I texted, uh, texted, you know, somebody who I, I know would know these things. And, uh, I got the answer and, and the answer is no, as long as the team and the player are both comfortable to their PTO agreement, he can continue to practice with the team and sign whenever. So mm -hmm. I do expect for a signing to come at some point, uh, probably before Wednesday's game, I would imagine. We can get into that uh, in, in a couple of minutes here. Uh, defensively, not really any um, surprises when you look at the top six. Riley Brody, McCabe, Klingberg, Gio, and Lilligren. You've got Miko Kokonen and uh, Miller, I guess, is, is a small surprise to see here. You look up front also, McMahon and Cowan. Easton Cowan, technically making the roster out of training camp. Um, let's go into this really quickly, Dave. Uh, do you want to go into the, the the numbers and the reasoning as to why or how the Maple Leafs, who forever we've been talking about how this group was not going to be able to carry any extra players 
into the season. They're going to have to cut it down to 20 guys. How's it possible, Dave, that they have all these extra players, forwards, defensemen on their squads? How is any of this possible? Well, we know that a couple of these guys will get sent down before the game because you can't have more than 23 players on a roster. So that's the first thing. But obviously, LTIR played a huge part in it, right? We know that Jake Muzzin, LTIR. We already know Matt Murray. We're going to get into that a little bit more. LTIR. With Cowan, basically because Noah Gregor still on his PTO, Ethan Cowan can still be there. It's once Gregor Gregor signed, that's likely where Ethan Cowan's name comes off the books. He's going to go back down. And likely the same thing with... Um, like Bobby McMahon can stay because they can have 13 forwards. That's yeah. the big one here. So actually, I'm going to pull up the Cap Friendly page. Um, it pretty much describes how the Leafs can have a roster of 21 instead of the 20 that we were kind of anticipating for most of the off season. And so this is kind of how it all works out. And the Leafs, they barely use uh, their L- their like full LTIR relief as well. But yeah, I think uh, it's a lot of cap gymnastics. Like <laughs> Brandon Printham did probably his best work. In that, not only did he get the Leafs to be cap compliant, but also doing without going with the twenty man roster. The Connor Timmins injury was the one that saved the Leafs from having to make even tougher decisions, right? Than they had to. Yeah. Now, uh, definitely, that was a a massive situation for them. So as it stands right now, they technically they got twenty three guys, so they they're not over. They do have the the twenty three yeah. players on the roster, and the reason why. There's 24 guys that are listed on the lineup when you went and you looked at it in the practice lines. is because, remember, Noah Gregor is on a PTO, not signed to a contract. So that doesn't count towards the 23 players. So, you know, Miller, Kokanen, Easton Cowan, all three of those guys um, are the extras that they have in the lineup as of now. That being said, we fully anticipate that more moves will be made today. More moves could definitely happen that could change how things kind of shake out for the Toronto Maple Leafs. So I'm actually going to pull up, uh, pull up the cap friendly right now, and you know we'll see exactly where this team is at when it comes to both the cap. They're about eight hundred thousand uh, dollars. You know they have an extra cap space that they have that they can kind of play with here a little bit. Uh, so here's pretty much how things are set up. We'll make this small change here. But this is pretty much how things are set up. And as of now, there is no contract currently with uh, with uh, Noah. Noah Gregor, which is why LW4, as of now, is not uh, filled. Easton Callum made the team, technically. So the reason why is because this they want to be as close to the roster as possible humanly possible as close to the ceiling rather as humanly possible in order to exercise the LTIR uh, cap space as much as they can. So they built up a roster of players that make up the closest to $83.5 million in cap space. And just like the Leafs always do, they got themselves oh so close within $8,000 of that roster. But as of tomorrow, they'll be able to get some relief. They can put other guys on LTIR or on IR and they could start making other moves and then they could bring in a Noah Gregor. So what I fully anticipate to happen here, Dave, tomorrow is Easton Cowan. Thanks for coming out, but you will probably end up going back down to, uh, to the minors had a really good start to camp. And I think coming all the way to the very end is great. We saw similar things happen to Fraser Minton last, last year and look what he happened in his draft plus one year. Uh, and then eventually, I think we will also see Miko Kokonen get sent down to the minors as well as uh, the other defensemen. And then same with Miller. Miller will get sent down and they will sign Noah Gregor to a contract. My guess is either today or Wednesday to league minimum or thereabouts at 775000 They could keep Bobby McMahon as their extra roster player. And all of a sudden, you're at 169,000 in cap space, fully compliant. And I expect for this to be the opening night and opening game roster for the Toronto Maple Leafs. 
Yeah, and it was it's uh it's interesting that when you look at the roster itself, um I really do wonder I mean, knock on wood, an injury doesn't happen. But on the blue line, that still remains. Obviously, they could wave Bobby McMahon if they need to bring someone up. But yep. we already know John Klingberg is dealing with something. We already know that Cal Yarncroke was dealing with something. So, like, we had this issue in the past where a little injury can really put this team in a tough position. That being said, I think this this might be their better situated cap situation in a long time just because they didn't have to. Yes. When Connor Timmons returns, that makes things a little more difficult, but for now it's kind of, I feel like there it's, this is a little more settled than in past years. Yeah. I, I, I think so as well, where there wasn't, you know, a whole lot of gymnastics. Like you look at what they've had to do by sending down, you know, Holmberg and Robertson. I think that was going to happen regardless. Mm-hmm. Um, the real kid gymnastics was actually they had to add cap by adding Kokanen, adding Easton Cowan and and Miller and keeping those guys on the roster to get as close to the ceiling as possible in order to utilize those uh, those cap loopholes. And once they've done that, that allows them to go over and that allows them to uh, to, you know, gain that flexibility in that space that they're going to need going forward into the season. So uh, I think that the Leafs did a, a fine job. Also, Bobby McMahon can end up going on LTIR. Uh, I think it's what, 24 hours after the 5 p.m. deadline. So as of Tuesday at 5 p.m., he could go on injured reserve and then it's not going to cost any uh, season opening LTI space. Uh, won't cost against them. So I think they can save. Uh, I think the number was, you know, like a hundred and something thousand in, in space. If they wait 24 hours to put him on LTIR or they can keep him if he's ready to ready to play, you know, relatively soon, he could be the 13th forward. But um, that was another little note that I had seen floating around that could potentially happen uh, to do a little bit more cap gymnastics. But I think this is the roster that we're looking at for night one against the Montreal Canadiens. This is the roster for opening night for your Toronto Maple Leafs. What do you make of it, Dave? Overall, what do you make of this team night one? Um, I mean, it's hard always to judge with what you see in preseason. I like the mix up front quite a bit. I'm I'm going to wait and see what the, what the blue line, right? It, on paper, it doesn't look as maybe as strong as what we saw through the end of last year, but I think maybe a little more balanced is probably, I know it doesn't have the, the, the snot on the back end that it does up front, but I felt like up front needed more work done. when you look at how the playoffs ended up last year. So I like the mix up front a lot better blue line. I'm in a wait and see approach. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm, with you, most I believe would also be probably in the same boat where they look at this this four groupings and they think to themselves, this is pretty deep. Like, and you add Fraser Minton into the fold, and you know, he's going to get a nine game look. It's possible for him to extend it if he looks good in those nine games. Absolutely, the Leafs would love to keep him on the roster going forward. I don't think that they would, you know, be worried about burning a year of his contract if he earned it. I mean, if he's a great third line center, bam, you got a third line center for like 900 grand. Not too shabby, if you ask me. Um, so I've heard a lot of people say, do you think they keep him after the, the nine games, or is this just to get a look, give him a sniff? No, if he deserves to be there and he continues to earn his way into the roster on a nightly basis, he'll be there game 10. He will be. And and the Leafs will figure it out after that what else they want to do with this team. Um, but it really does kind of round things out. It's a pretty dominant top nine when you really look at it. Like, the addition of Bertuzzi and Domi gives them that added little layer that wasn't necessarily there on the left side last year. Like, keep in mind, do you remember who the le- the second line left winger was for the Maple Leafs last year? To start the year. To start the year. Oh my goodness! It was, was it Gino, Kirkland? Gino oh. Mulgan. Oh my God! Dennis Mul- <laughs> Dennis Mulgan was on this opening night roster last year, um, putting around in in the top six. So. You know, that's that's more depth. Come a long way is what you're trying to say. Come a long way. I'll take Bertuzzi Domi over Bunting and Mulligan any day of the week is basically what I'm saying here, Brooksy. And um, 
you know, you add in Matthew Nyes as, as a third liner. I think that's a, a, a terrific, terrific piece for the Maple Leafs. Obviously, they can continue to build chemistry, him and Minton. And then fourth line, I, I like what you got in camp and Noah Gregor. Ryan Reeves, it, it, jury's still out on him. You know, I've made it very well known over the course of the summer during, uh, you know, during this podcast that I wasn't the biggest fan of the signing. I'm still not the biggest fan of the signing. And I mean, realistically, I would prefer Sam Lafferty over Ryan Reeves, but because of that signing, Sam Lafferty had to go. Um, and, and there's a couple other things that had to happen because they signed this guy to a $1.3 million contract, but they seem to like him. Um, so we'll, we'll reserve judgment until, uh, until a couple of months in on, on Reaver. How about that? And as for the blue line, yeah, uh, there was much anticipation that there was going to be change to this blue line and we didn't get it not a whole lot of change to uh to this blue line from last season though in comes Klingberg and out goes Justin Hall is basically the only difference from from uh from last year I get Luke Shen also is gone as well and now you got Lilligren as a nightly staple in this in this lineup too so not a whole lot of change to the blue line and obviously uh we look at a, a duo that no longer is Samsonov and Murray but instead it's Samsonov and now Joseph Wall will become a bona fide NHL backup for uh this group. How do you feel about the goaltending? Like, do you think that this goaltending can can hold up? Do you have faith in Samsonov coming off of the season that he just had? And well, how about Joseph Wall? Is he ready to take on, you know, uh, an, uh, a a role where he's gonna have to probably play 25 plus games this year? Well, I think with Samsonov, he didn't have the best final game against the Red Wings. Um, I'm just hoping that he's get, he was just getting you know back. So he didn't play a lot in preseason, really. When you look at at it, right? They didn't need him to play a lot of games. I get that. I think he, like the expectations aren't too high for him, right? To like have like you know a Sorokin or Shesterkin like season. It's just. Don't be bad, right? Just be even average. If you give above average, this Leafs team is a good, good enough to win games with average goaltending. We've seen it. It's what can if if he can have a repeat of last season and even better. That's what's going to push this team that much further, right? Do I see that happening? He has to have that in, in that motivation himself to do, it, and I think he does. But I think what I'm hoping for is Joseph Wool is going to push him. I do want to see that internal competition a little bit. Now, do I want the, you know, talk about, oh, is Joseph Wall going to take his job? That'd be an unneeded, unnecessary distraction. But at the same time, it would also mean that Joseph Wall is taking that much of a step forward and something that this Leafs team hadn't really had in past years with a backup, maybe since Jack Hamill took over Frederick Anderson's job. Which wasn't that long ago, well, to be fair. But, I mean, it feels like a long time ago, but I mean, it was more so injury than performance based, right? Because yeah. did get injured, right? But like, we haven't had the backup steal games and have a developed guy steal games as well. This is true. This is true. Uh, speaking of backup goaltenders and goalies in general, plenty more news around the organization involving. Uh, a couple attendees who've worn the Maple Leafs uniform. Let's come back and chat about some other stuff that we learned today, some other news uh, nuggets from the Maple Leafs. We'll get to that on the other side. I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave Moore Studio. Listen to Locked On These Podcasts, part of Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. And today's show is brought to you by Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next event. Game Time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you with killer last minute deals all in prices views from your seat and their best price guarantee game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets you can see the view of your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive you can buy tickets in seconds with just two taps one two and they're purchased they're obsessed with finding you ways to help you save money on tickets you can find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football basketball baseball, hockey, concerts, and more with zone deals. You pick the section, game time picks the seats for an average of 18% savings. Take the guessing work out of buying your tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 
off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account and redeem the code Locked On NHL. That's Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back into the Locked On at Least podcast. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti. Uh, this is a daily Maple Leaf centric podcast here. Uh, so you can find us wherever you stream your podcast from online. And then also find us up on YouTube as well. We got new episodes coming out each day, Monday through Friday. It's all Leafs all the time. And uh, speaking of the Maple Leafs, a couple of newsy nuggets that also uh, came out today. The Leafs put out a little press release blurb notifying us of some key off-ice things. Dave, uh, why don't you tell the good folks listening uh, you know, a couple of the things that uh, we were notified about today? Well, the first one being... Um... Matt Murray, we now know what that mysterious procedure he was having. It was hip surgery. Mm-hmm. He is expected to be out six to eight months, which generally is the timeline for hip surgery, a, a bilateral hip surgery. Ask me what a bilateral hip, lateral hip surgery is. I couldn't tell you. All I, goalie, right? Like, like hips are really important for goaltending yeah. to do with the amount of the flexibility you need to go side to side. Um, it, it's a pretty big injury for any goaltender to, yeah. to have. So it's... It, it, it is unfortunate for Matt Murray. It is unfortunate. And we knew that it was going to keep him out long term. Now, you know, it's six to eight months. We have a definitive timeline. Minimum uh, six to eight months minimum, which means we ain't going to see Matt Murray at all this year. Yeah. But I do have a sneaky suspicion. He should be ready to go by training camp next year. If a team hmm. wants to give him a shot and uh, go down the Matt Murray path yeah. once again. But. Probably it for Matt Murray this year, as expected, uh, due to hip surgery. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, another quick little news nugget we got about the goaltending department here in Toronto, Dave. Worst I'll give you a secret. Worst hey. secret that Curtis McElhaney is back. Yeah, baby. And it's director of goaltending development and scouting. At first, I read that as director of goaltending. I thought, wait, but they already had a goaltending coach. I'm like, no, it's development and scouting. So this is someone that's going to work with the Curtis boxes. Sanford. So yeah. here's the thing, though. Like, remember they had brought in John Elkin last yeah. year, and John Elkin quietly picked up his ball and left and mm-hmm. went with Kyle Dubas to Pittsburgh over the summer. So there are some roles within the the Leafs goaltending department in which they're trying to continue to expand and grow. So now they've got Curtis McElhaney coming in. He'll be the the director of goaltending development. Here's the thing. Like I've spoke with McElhaney a couple of times. He was a frequent guest on, on Leafs launch. I had no idea he was interested in getting into the game in this capacity, but he did always keep an eye on it from afar. And keep in mind the goaltenders that he sat behind, especially at the end of his career. And no one has, you know, knows Andre Vasilevsky and what it takes to be a good goaltender, probably more than than Curtis McElhaney, who backed him up for a couple of Stanley Cups there. Um, I think this is great to to bring in another goalie eye. And if he's gonna be the director of scouting, goaltending scouting, that's big, man. And, and that's that's always been the issue. Like I've spoken with a lot of goaltenders, and Noodles always said this is the biggest problem and reason why NHL teams whiff on goalies so much is because they don't really have many former goalies in those scouting meetings, in those scouting rooms that are doing it. It's just, you know, regular amateur uh, scouts who are out there trying to evaluate goaltenders. It's not the same as defensemen and forwards. And it seems like NHL teams are now starting to pick up, okay, if we want to have someone go and take a look at goalies. It should be someone who played the position at some point at a high level at that. Curtis McElhaney has done that. Won himself yeah. a couple of Stanley Cups, and he's going to bring that uh, that type of knowledge uh, to this Leafs organization. I think it's a good hire. Yeah, and the Leafs have quite a few young goaltenders in the system, right? You yeah. Keep Petruzzelli, Dennis Hildeby, uh, Pexa, Akitiamov, the one that's actually tearing it up in the KHL right now. If you haven't watched, he's been unreal. Arthur Akitiamov. Arthur Akitiamov. Yeah. You're better with the Russian names than me. We already knew that. But this was something that... Someone reached out on Twitter and they said they were really upset about the uh, Abruzzese uh, demotion because apparently no one in Toronto media could say that guy's last name like you. And he said he felt bad about it. I don't know if I saw that on Twitter, but we did get a note on that one, actually. But 
you know, I, I got the I got the Italian names. You got the Russian names. Apparently, <laughs> apparently, yeah. apparently. Uh, and then finally, guys. Yeah, what's that? Well, it's important to get those guys that that development though, as we were saying, because you know, they're this is where you build your your pipeline for you know not just bringing in goaltenders, not having to worry about other goaltenders leaving. How many organizations have allowed? Starting goaltenders leave because we believe in the guy behind him. Yeah. One day, one you know, not too long ago, Andre Vasilevsky took over for Ben Bishop in Tampa. This you is know, true. Igor this Shesterkin true. took over for one Henrik Lundqvist in New York. This is true. Broken took over for Varlamov. I could list off many goaltenders here. Uh, Jake Ottinger in Dallas, right? Like, yeah. Best- also Ben Bishop. Ben Bishop and uh Wander took over for Bishop. Yeah, but there was another Russian goaltender who led them to the playoff. Oh, kind of- we're not going home. Yeah. What was his name? Why am I oh no? Oh, I'm blanking. But yeah, he ended up in I think he was in Boston also for a little bit. Yeah. Uh you gotta Google it for me. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm Googling it now because it's gonna kill me if I oh Anton Kudobin. Hudobin, that's it. Anton Hudobin, yeah, yeah. Like, but that's that's what it like. If you look at why certain teams have been able to be so successful in bringing in other free agents or making deals, it's because they're not spending a lot of money on goaltending because they are getting these young guys in a little bit earlier when they're still cheap and good, right? Yeah, right. So that's important. I think uh, the Leafs realize. They put themselves into tough situations where they constantly had to trade assets to go and get a goaltender. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the two goalies that they picked up now, the two goalies that are there, didn't cost them anything but money or draft capital. And that's exactly what you want to see if you're, uh, you know, a Maple Leafs fan, not having to give up major assets to acquire what is arguably the most important thing when it comes to hockey. I mean, so many times, you know, a lot of really smart hockey people. Uh, we'll say sometimes the league should be called goalie because if you got a good one, I mean, it can mask a lot of problems. Just, you know, go look at what you saw happen last year with the uh, Sergei Bobrovsky and how far he took that team with the way that he was playing uh, over the course of like a month um, for the Florida Panthers. A couple more additions were made to the uh, organization in terms of uh, a couple more scouts. Let's take a quick break. We'll come back and I'll tell you, all about the former NHLers who are transitioning into the scouting game for the Maple Leafs. We'll get into that in just a moment. But first, let me tell you about FanDuel. Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book right now. New customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. When you place a $5 bet, that's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action, the app is super easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. I mean, what a better time. Hockey starts tonight. Go ahead, hit that over if you want on the Connor Bernard props, and hopefully he has himself a heck of a night tonight. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NHL season. FanDuel, official partner of the Locked On Network. Welcome back into the Locked On at Least podcast. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave more Sudi. Uh, we're 24 hours away from the Maple Leafs drop of the puck for their first game of the 2023-2024 season. We've got uh, NHL action starting tonight as well with a triple header, including one between Connor Bedard and Sidney Crosby. Now we're going to split these into kind of two podcasts, by the way. Like well, this is one, and and then in like a couple hours, let's drop another one. Kind of teeing up these games, teeing up the season with our projections, be a little bit of a shorter pod. But keep in mind, uh, yeah, so we'll have two pods that are going to be coming out today. So keep an eye on YouTube. Keep an eye wherever you get your podcasts also uh, for that content. Um, But as I was saying before we took a break there, there's a couple more announcements that were made today uh, in regarding a couple of former NHLers transitioning into the scouting world. Dave. Yeah, we have, uh, well, I'll, I'll tee off the, I mean, not so big name and Chris Bork. I mean, but let's not bury the lead. Come on. Oh, he's going to be college free agent scout, but Jake Muzzin, he has a job. <laughs> he's not going to be sitting around at home, I guess, uh, 
I can expect that. I expect he would have been around the team in some capacity. But Jake, he was around the team a lot last year, actually. A lot of people didn't know that. He was quietly traveling with the team. He was around. He was a good, you know, support for the club. He wasn't, he wasn't at home the whole time. Although he wasn't playing, he was around the group, which was good to see. But now, yeah, now he's got an actual role within the organization. He is a pro scout. I really am curious of how that all came about. Was Brad Jordan like, hey, you want a job? Because we're paying you for this year. Uh, yeah, I guess I can't just go play golf for the whole, for, you know, there's only so much golf one could play. Yeah. Um, Jake wants a big golfer. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'd be curious to see how, uh, how, you know, what his role will be, I suppose. You know, when it comes to pro scouts, like sometimes they're, they're set up. Okay. You get, you know, certain regions, like you're going to scout this division. You're going to scout these players or these teams. Uh, sometimes it's a little more pinpointed. We're thinking about trading for, you know, a defenseman in this range. Let's go, you know, go and take a look at all of these defensemen uh, and go scout them. So it'll be interesting to see how Jake Muzzin will be able to implement those skills, you know, playing so many years in the NHL, you know, good, rugged, tough, physical defensive defenseman mm. stanley cup champion he knows you know what it takes to win good character guy it'll be interesting to see how he can translate that into his next endeavor as a pro scout uh in in the nhl i think he'll do good though i, I mean jake muzzin knows how the game's supposed to be played right i think that he'll be a, a great scout and hopefully find a couple of diamonds in the rough for the maple Leafs when they're ready to make some trades with other teams or also preparing the least for potential matchups. Cause I know sometimes pro scouts also look at, you know, pro, you know scouting yeah. and looking at a team that they're going up against. That could be another thing to look at there, but it's good that Muzzin's going to still be around. I know that a lot of the players on this Leafs team are very close to Muzzin. So it's good that he is sticking around with the organization. And, you know, with Spezza moving on, it, it, it's still nice to have somebody in the organization who does have ties to that locker room yep. and knows how things tick there too. So he can also check off that box for being a direct line for management to the players. So I, I think that you is see also when you a said benefit. Jason Spezza's name. I was going like, Jason, who, 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 <laughs> who's this guy you're talking about? The Yeah. 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 No, he's, he's, he's in pit, man. He's in pit. Good for him. AGM. Pretty big job. No longer with Toronto though. Uh, yeah, so Jake Muzzin, congrats uh, on a hell of a career. I guess that's that's it, you know, hanging up the skates and unfortunate, you know, tough, tough couple injuries the last couple of years that, you know, eventually he just realized not worth it, not worth, you know, getting another injury and, and possibly affecting his health long term. So uh, hopefully he's at peace with the decision. Sounds like he is, but wants to remain within the game and is the way that a lot of players are able to do that. Um, you mentioned also Chris Bork additionally was also named head scout of college free agents. Uh, this is his second year with the club. He was hired there last year to be uh, an amateur scout. And um, he someone himself who's played a, a long time, uh, 17 years of professional hockey. So knows how to play the game, right? Long time journeyman played for many, many, many different organizations and teams and, uh, you know, someone who, uh, you know, when when the Maple Leafs are, are doing their rounds, looking for some college free agents at the end of the season, you know, he's someone who's going to come into play and, and hopefully will be able to scout the ones that he believes can turn into players down the road and hopefully act as a bit of a liaison between the players and the Maple Leafs when, uh, when that time comes. So, you know, a bunch of dudes being added to this organization as Brad Trilovin continues to fill out his, uh, you know, his guys. So Muzzin. Pro Scout, Chris Bork, head of scouting for college free agents, and then Curtis McElhaney, named director of goaltending, uh, development, and scouting. Um, so those were the the three organizational moves that were announced today, in addition to the Matt Murray information and all the other stuff. So it was a busy day, a busy news day, and uh, I'm sure there will be some more news over the next 24 hours as uh, we expect the Gregor uh, signing to happen and with that we'll ha have to see a couple of guys probably get sent down uh, as well so still a couple more moves to keep an eye on um but that'll do it uh you now for today uh tomorrow's game day buddy i'm excited 
We are going to put out another episode, so the, there should be two. You should expect to see a second one today, kind of teeing up the, the NHL season. We'll tee up the triple header tonight and give our, our predictions on how we think the, the season's going to uh, go as a whole and give her you know prediction on who we think is going to win MVP, goals champion, and, and a fun little Connor Bedard projection as well. So that'll be coming up in uh, in another podcast. So keep an eye out for that one. But that's going to do it for us here today on the pod. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Lockdown Leafs podcast on all podcast platforms to receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on Twitter at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore more Sudi. Follow the show as well at Lockdown Leafs. If you like the video, go ahead, smash that like button for us here on YouTube. Leave a comment down below as well. Reach out to us on Twitter. We would greatly appreciate all of those things. Uh, so check back for another episode shortly, but also we'll be back tomorrow to tee up. Leafs, Habs, game one of 82 and more. Uh, but until then, keep it locked right here on Lockdown Leafs.